Hello and welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Financial education is an evolving process as children who learn the basics are able to build on that foundation as they become adults. Here in West Virginia, several organizations have made financial literacy a top priority. The West Virginia State Treasurer's Office has taken the lead with programs like Get a Life, which is a budget simulation for middle school students. West Virginia University Extension is also reaching out to communities around the state to increase financial literacy. Now these two entities are joining together to reach a greater number of West Virginians. We'll talk more about those plans later in the show, but first, let's learn more about the State Treasurer's Get a Life program. During a Get a Life budget simulation, students are provided a life scenario. They are given a career, as well as the monthly salary for that occupation. Students then go to various stations, like a car dealership, the grocery store, and much more, where they must make purchases and enter the monthly cost of those purchases in a ledger. The goal is to make that monthly salary stretch to cover all the necessary costs. But students soon learn that that isn't always as easy as it sounds. Joining me today to talk more about Get a Life is Victoria Emery. Miss Emery is a counselor at Elkview Middle School, which hosts the Get a Life budget event annually for students. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for having me. All right. Well, Ms. Emery, Elkview Middle School um, invites the Treasurer's Office to bring Get a Life, that budget simulation, to the students each year. How do the students and the faculty react to this program? Can you kind of give us a little bit of insight into how it's received? Sure. Well, I think at the beginning of the day, um, we usually start in the morning. At the very beginning of the day, our students are really confused. Um, they typically don't know a lot about what's going to happen in the day, um, and we bring them all into the gym uh, where we have all of the stations set up, and they sit in the bleachers and they hear a little bit about what's going to happen. And then they get their card um, that has all their information, and it's sort of just a learning experience at the very beginning, um, uh, but they get really into it really quickly, um, a lot of hands-on learning. and then. Afterwards, I hear nothing but positive things. I hear a lot of surprise from them. I didn't know this, I didn't know that. Um, but overall, very positive. And I think the staff really enjoys hearing um, the kids sort of take on adult perspectives to budgeting. And you have some of the ledgers that here with you. Mm -hmm. um, this is just really a fun experience, I think, for a lot of students around the state and right there at your school. Get a Life gives kids a chance to experience these real world strategies, these budgeting strategies, strategies without some of the real world consequences. So that's mm -hmm. one of the pluses to this experience. Why do you feel that's such an important lesson for kids, especially at the middle school level? Well, I think at the middle school level specifically, these kids are just beginning to think about what happens um, down the road for them. In high school, a lot of students are already making their plans. You know, they're deciding, well, next year I'm going to college or next year I'm going to a trade program. And in middle school, they're sort of just starting those plans. Um, we do a lot of career education with our kids actually weekly. But the Get a Life program is just an annual event that we love doing because it gets them excited about it and it exposes them to all different kinds of careers that they don't even know about. Um, I think it's really important to talk to kids about it because often they only know what they've been exposed to. Um, and so this kind of thing is really important just to get their kind of gears going. Certainly, and it, as you said, it exposes them to different occupations. It also gives them a little sample of different lifestyles. For example, they could be married, they could have children, they could be single. Mm -hmm. So through that experience, they're able to find out maybe um, if, you know, if I have a big family, I'm going to have to tighten my budget a little mm -hmm. bit more. How do they react to that aspect of this budget simulation? Because I'm sure you get a lot of people maybe wanting to compare cards, oh, compare yes. notes. Yes, yes. Actually, today I spoke with um, some students just to refresh my mind before uh, our conversation, and one of my students told me that both uh, times he had a card, because they get two cards, both cards he had six children, um, and so he said his money didn't go as far as some of his friends did, because he just had so many more expenses. Um, he needed a bigger house to pay for, um, he had to have a large vehicle, and I think those are the things that children don't often consider. Um, 
just the small details and and some of them have child care expenses um, and others do not and I think that's another thing that a lot of kids didn't uh, ever consider um, until they were playing the game we always call it a game with our kids um, because it's more fun that way. <laughs> and it is fun. And it, a lot of times they go through and, and they splurge. Even that first time around, they're splurging on um, maybe an expensive car, mm -hmm. a more expensive uh, living situation, more expensive house. Um, but then a lot of times they end up in the red, which means they are, you know, they don't have enough money, but then they get a second chance. And let's talk a little bit about that second chance, because for the second half of the activity, the students are able to get some type of higher education. Uh, they go back to the Smart 529 um, educational savings table, and they get a new card, which usually um, has an occupation that pays just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Talk about that piece of the experience. Yeah, so they actually, the first time they get a red card um, and those are typically the lower paid jobs um, and they make it work some of them but most of them like you said go into the red they go into debt um, which is great math practice for them too because they have to add and uh, subtract you know constantly uh, with their budget but they're buying things like xboxes and switches and um, tvs big plasma TVs and uh, Corvettes and things like that. Well, the second time they go through, they're buying more sensible options uh, most of the time, and maybe they're not buying those fun items before they pay their water bill. <laughs> And another lesson is really that higher education pays off. If they do something after high school, they're usually able to get a, a little bit higher paying salary versus, you know, if they work retail um, or right out of high school, mm -hmm. they may make a much smaller salary. So talk about that experience as well, because I know that a lot of the uh, students, that really has an impact on them. Oh, it absolutely does. And I, I just want to say this, um, we're not just talking about four-year colleges here. We're talking about... Um, apprenticeships, trade programs, all kinds of uh, post-secondary education options are included in those um, cards for the second round. So it's, it's not just that we're pushing children into universities, that's not it at all. But there's so many careers that require training um, beyond that on-the-job training. And so I do hear a lot of kids that are interested in pursuing some kind of education uh, post high school. We actually always do this program during um, college application and exploration week, the first week in November. I always try to get um, the Treasury Department to send, send the Get a Life team to us that week because it just goes so well with our career planning and college um, exploration that we're doing that week anyway, but it, it just yields so well to them making plans for themselves um, and to to have a hope and a dream and to work towards those goals. And I want to remind our viewers, we're here talking about the State Treasurer's Office Get a Life program. Um, Elkview Middle School is one of the first schools to participate in this program many, many years ago. And you've continued on this track of making sure that your students are able to um, benefit from these lessons. You also, uh, I wanted to talk about another lesson that the students learn. It's about the unexpected things that happen in life and one of the great things about get a life is the green not the grim but the green <laughs> reaper who goes around and gives out green reaper cards and those might be some of the unexpected things that you get in life that just happen yes yes they uh, do not like the green reaper <laughs> <laughs> um, I have seen kids running away from the green reaper in the gym uh, because they start to realize who that person is and what he's giving out. Um, but he's giving out car he's giving out little cards that say unexpected flat tire, um, unexpected uh, filling in your child's tooth, things like that. Um, just little expenses that come up, just like in real life, uh, that a that an adult has to plan for or take care of. Um, and so I think a lot of them are more careful with their savings because they're seeing their friends getting these Green Reaper cards and they go, oh no, well if I go buy that uh, fancy thing that maybe I just barely have enough money for, if something happens, I'm not going to make it. Um, and so it just kind of gets them thinking, but it is, it is always a very entertaining piece whenever they see him coming towards them and they just 
turn in the opposite direction. <laughs> well, Ms. Emery, you talked a lot about um, how some of them do like go and get the Xboxes, mm -hmm. uh, things that are extra. I know in this activity, in this uh, fun scenario, they do have to get certain items like a house, a car, insurance. Those are considered the essentials and they have mm -hmm. to purchase them. But that special station that they go to where they can get some extra things really starts to drive home the message about needs versus wants. And I'm sure you talk a little bit more about that in the classroom. Oh, we absolutely do. And they really do take that to heart. We even have kids who a budget so well during the activity the second time they're going through that they're able to buy a second car or something like that, which uh, for a lot of our students is just an unheard of um, luxury. And I think that it's been really interesting for them um, to kind of understand needs versus wants. Um, they do have to cover a lot of bills. I think a lot of them don't realize how many bills exist. <laughs> Um, and how many expenses there truly are. Um, but they, they learn quite a lot of different pieces through this. Certainly some unexpected lessons um, from their perspective. Can you tell us a little bit more of some of the feedback that you get from the students who go through this activity? Mm -hmm. well, well, I had one student tell me that they won't have more than three kids. <laughs> um, I've had lots of students tell me that they would like to get a well-paid job. Um, and I've had a lot of kids comment on how hard it is to make things work. Um, I've had parents comment to me that their child sat, sat with them that night and talked about um, you know, money and um, just was more considerate about needs and wants. And I, I think it's been really beneficial all around. Uh, we, just love, we just love the Get a Life program so much. And I want to go back to that, um, kind of what you said earlier, that middle school is a great age for this lesson. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Get a Life program was designed for middle schoolers and with middle school students in mind for a specific reason. But talk a little bit more to that point, because I think from your perspective, you have some great insight into why eighth graders specifically can really benefit from this lesson. Well, eighth grade is just such a transitional time. Um, it's almost like um, you think of your senior year as a transitional period into adulthood and whatever's next for you, but eighth grade is that same transitional period. Getting ready for something um, exciting and new, uh, but also they are planning. Um, and we start talking about careers as young as sixth grade, probably earlier, but I'm not in elementary school. Um, but we start talking about careers e weekly in class in sixth grade, but by eighth grade we want them to start identifying their own career cluster that they might be interested in, not picking a job, but picking a type of career that they're interested in um, or that might be a good fit for them. And it's something they continue to explore through high school because that's not something you can just decide, you know, and so we want to give them plenty of time to make those decisions. Do you think an activity like this could set them on a different path? Absolutely. I do. Um, I think that some of them might see that certain careers uh, within their career cluster make more than other careers within that cluster um, of jobs. And what I mean by that is like a group of jobs that share similar traits. Right. So, and, and that's a great lesson. You're not necessarily teaching them to be um, a doctor or a lawyer or a specific profession, but there are there are so many professions that have those qualities yes. and that skill set that they could pursue many different professions mm -hmm. based on that. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, any final thoughts as we just wrap up this conversation? I appreciate you coming on and talking about this. We talk about Get a Life all the time on this show because it is a program of the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office, but it's nice to have the perspective of school and uh, you know, a guidance counselor and just hearing what some of the students are saying as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess my, my last comment would be if, um, if you work in a school or if you uh, have anything to do with the school to invite the Treasury Department to do this at your school because it's, it's an easy activity for us. We just set up tables and then they kind of take it over from there. Um, and it's great. The kids love it. The follow-up conversations are fantastic. And it really, it really makes a difference. Six months later, uh, we did this in November and today's April. I spoke with students six months later and they're still remembering the details of the activity and that isn't typical for middle school lessons. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for hosting the Get a Life program. We appreciate you telling us about your experience mm -hmm. today. Now, if you would like to schedule a Get a Life event for your school, 
you can call the state treasurer's office. Just call that number 304-558-5000 to speak with a financial education specialist. You can also email your, re your request to wvtreasury at wvsto.com. We're going to take a short break right now, but when we return, we'll talk about how the treasurer's office is teaming up with WVU Extension to expand financial education opportunities here in West Virginia. Stay with us. The West Virginia State Treasurer's Vault is holding millions in unclaimed property. From uncast checks to forgotten utility deposits, we want to return your money to you. Find out if you have unclaimed property. Search your name at wvtreasury.com. Welcome back to Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Joins. No matter your age, financial decisions are a part of life. You just heard about the Get a Life activity, which teaches basic uh, budgeting skills. And in an effort to reach more students around the state, the Treasurer's Office is teaming up with WVU Extension Services to make sure this opportunity is available in all 55 counties. Joining us today to talk more about this partnership and WVU Extension's financial literacy efforts is Lauren Weatherford. Lauren is a Family and Community Development Extension Agent for Fayette and Nicholas Counties. Lauren, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Well, when people think about WVU Extension, they often think about the services that are provided sometimes in the agriculture industry. Um, but you have offices and staff around the state. You offer so much more. Let's just start this conversation by talking a little bit about WVU Extension and what you are all about. Sure. Um, WVU Extension has been around for a very long time, over 100 years. It is part of the land-grant mission of West Virginia University. And so as part of that, they have their mission of the of WVU Extension is to improve the lives and livelihoods of the people of West Virginia. But while we started in agriculture, there was that kind of beginning of this research base to take take this information that's at the university, bring it back to the local communities in a way that people can work with it. So that started in agriculture, and the idea was if you were going to start in agriculture, you would then work with the future of agriculture, which would be the youth. So we, we have areas of agriculture and natural development. We have youth, 4-H uh, and youth development. And then we also have uh, what was kind of the other part of the family, which traditionally was the, the wives in the, in the farm household. And that would have started with home ec and family consumer science into what is today family and community development. So we have a lot, while we still have those roots in those areas that we started with, we have a lot of modernized programs. So for instance, 4-Hers don't just do ag programs, which they do a lot of, and we're proud of those programs, but they also do things like fashion design and community development projects with My Hometown is Cool. And so with my job, we've, we've moved into community development and then also in the 4-H and agricultural areas they've modernized and updated as well. And then we have things like safety and health and our fire academy. There's a wide variety of things that Extension does that meet the needs of West Virginians. And it's all about well-being and, and so many things interconnect when mm -hmm. you're talking about those particular spaces. I know WV Extension and the State Treasurer's Office place a huge emphasis on financial education and that's a top priority here in West Virginia. Talk a little bit about ways your organization is working to increase financial literacy and financial awareness. Sure. We have worked with financial literacy education for a long time in a variety of different ways. There's, um, and in the different elements that extension covers. But we wanted to kind of have a kind of a strategic approach to it. So one of the things we did was created a financial literacy education team at the state level, which includes agents uh, from all the different disciplines. And that is allowing us to create programs in basic finance, credit and debt, savings and investing, and then also things like uh, completing your FAFSA and applying for financial aid. So those are kind of the things we started with. And then we wanted to make sure that we were really optimizing our resources with the partners available. And that was something by going by partnering with the state treasurer's office and the Get a Life program where they have this great program that really energizes and 
gets everybody excited about the idea of financial literacy and then hopefully the extension service will be able to partner with them not only to increase their programming but also to be able to um, find more audiences for our programming. A lot of alignment of goals with the Get a Life program and what WVU Extension is trying to accomplish in the financial literacy space and um, just the fact that I think the two programs are really able to lean on each other for their strengths with mm -hmm. Get a Life you have that kind of one day big event that um, as we heard earlier from a school counselor is you know sometimes shocking to the students sometimes gets them excited sometimes gets them thinking and then WVU Extension also has um, a program that where you guys can come in and, and talk a little bit more in depth about financial mm -hmm. education and financial well-being in the household. Sure. So we're in kind of the beginning stages. We've really taken this strategic approach for the last couple years. And with that, we're able, so there we've trained a lot of our agents and instructors at the county level in our various financial literacy programs. Not all of them are trained, but we hope that that increases. We know that the need for financial literacy is there, so we want to be able to provide that to our middle schools and high school programs, as well as private groups. So if there was a group that maybe wasn't associated with a school directly, but knew that there needed some financial literacy for their youth or even adults, we have the capacity to do that so they should then contact their local extension office. That's a great point and I know Get a Life does the same thing. It's it's primarily for the schools but um, there are some other entities that use the Get a Life program um, for their camps or mm -hmm. different activities uh, just to have that available to them. Let's talk a little bit about Get a Life because I know you've seen it in action so I just wanted to get your take on on how it impacts students and why you think it's important to talk about financial responsibility at the middle school level. Sure, there's a lot of research out there that shows that, that financial knowledge gain leads to better decisions and a higher quality of life. So just having that basic knowledge of financial literacy allows you to grow up and make good decisions, which allows you to make better financial decisions, which then gives you a higher quality of life. And so the earlier we can start with helping our children to understand those concepts, the better off we are. Middle school is a great way to start because they have ideas about what it's like to be in, be kind of grown up-ish, but they're not quite there yet. So we still have time to really work with them. So middle school is an ideal age to start with. And you have seen it in action. So uh, yeah. just your reaction to seeing what the kids are talking about and how they're going around to all the different stations as they're called. Oh, it, it's fascinating because a lot of them, you'll see some who um, maybe aren't, dis aren't that interested or maybe think they've got this and they really don't. So once they start kind of going through the process and, and having to spend their money out, they're like, wait a minute, like this is hard. And then they have to go and try to figure out how to make those balanced and informed decisions. And that can be really tough, but to watch them figure out, and then when they get to do round two, to watch them get a chance to do it again, um, really makes a huge impact. And I think WVU Extension, as you mentioned, has some tools to help further the lessons and to expand on what's being taught through the Get a Life activity. Right. So the Get a Life program really kind of gives them that shock factor that, right. you know, this is important. I'm going to need to know that stuff. And we also, the school staff also gets involved in, in such ways. And we always hear the school staff talk about, you know, they need more of this. This is so great. Look at them. They're really engaged with this. And so um, WVU Extension has these programs, particularly the ones that we mentioned before, the fi basic finance, credit and debt, which we're working with some entrepreneur programs. You know, understanding credit is key to being an entrepreneur or a small business owner in the future and then understanding savings and investing for the long term. So we're able to go into both middle schools and high schools to follow up with that kind of thing if the schools are interested in partnering with us on that. 
And another element to the Get a Life lesson, the holistic lesson, is that some type of higher education is important. Mm -hmm. It's important that a student look beyond high school um, for their training and, and just try to be lifelong learners. That message is kind of um, emphasized with Smart 529 College Savings Plan. They're, they're taught a little bit about that through Get a Life. Mm -hmm. But I know that's important, obviously, to WVU Extension is to make sure that the students are thinking about higher education. Absolutely. Um, and we want to be able to very early start to dispel some of the myths like, you know, my family makes too much money, I can't afford to go to school because I wouldn't get any aid, or college isn't worth it. And we want to be able to show, and I know, you know, Get a Life does a good job of kind of showing that when you have some of those uh, occupations that require college degrees, you make more money over the lifetime, that kind of thing. Um, but the that then we're able to work with kids and talk about, you know, what are your skill sets, what are your interests, and here's some of the further education. Most jobs today, not all, but most jobs today require some kind of education after high school. Even if it's not a four-year degree, it may be some kind of other training or certification. And, you know, we talk a lot about this with the program. Financial wellness isn't always just about the individual. That's kind mm -hmm. of where it starts, but it also really impacts the larger community. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, when families or individuals have better financial health, then they're able to interact in their community. So for instance, if somebody has um, some, some kind of free spending money, uh, because they have they have a budget that allows them to you know go out on a weekend and and go get some entertainment or spend some money at local shops that helps local businesses local businesses do better so there's this kind of uh, waterfall effect when individuals do better financially then the communities do better and the more that people know about their financial well-being the better they tend to practice which then impacts their community overall so if you had a whole community of people who had amounts of savings in the bank and money that they could spend on um, leisure activities, then that's going to trickle down into the whole community. And so you're able to really impact everyone positively. Right. And I think that's why it's important um, that Get a Life uses. One of the aspects of Get a Life is that community volunteers help out with mm -hmm. this day-long activity. And I know, as I said, you've experienced it firsthand. Many of the WVU Extension agents have helped out over the years with the Get a Life activity as volunteers right there for, for whichever school district they're in. Um, and now we're kind of taking this partnership a step further where you're gonna be a little bit more involved and, and help uh, expand to some of the counties that don't offer Get a Life and also just be able to offer some more with the extension services in these communities. Sure, um, so one of the first things we're doing by, with our partnership is by sharing the information about the Get a Life. Some people already knew about it, but we were able to expose the Get a Life program to extension personnel who, who weren't familiar with it. So at the very least, when the Get a Life program comes to town, you, they can call the extension office, and because we're rooted in the communities, we can help contact and recruit for more volunteers. Often we also serve as volunteers. Um, and then in terms of expanding in time, we'll hopefully be able to, and some of the counties that Get a Life isn't able to reach through the treasurer's office, we'll be able to kind of implement that program um, and partner through there to expand the program out to some of the counties that maybe haven't been reached yet. So and we're hoping in time to reach the whole state. Anything else you'd like to add? Just that I think that um, if you haven't been involved with Get a Life, I highly recommend that you contact the treasurer's office and say, I'd like to volunteer when it comes to town. They've got a whole schedule throughout the year. And if you have any questions about some of the programming that WVU Extension offers, then give your county office a call. They're under usually listed under government services. That's fantastic. A great resource for all the people of West Virginia. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate That's it. That's all the time we have. Thank you for joining us. You can learn more about the State Treasurer's Office and its programs by visiting wvtreasury.com. You can also stay up to date on the latest news and information from the office. Just like and follow WV Treasury on your favorite social media platform. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the West Virginia State Treasurer's Office.